Okay, so what we're going to do in this demo is we're going to take a look at the Storage Made Easy on-premise appliance and show it working with our ScalaT storage. We're going to show you how it works for both organization administrators as well as regular users. And we'll show it working across the many channels of access that we have. Um, we'll finish by reviewing the standalone applications that we have for ScalaT. We'll start by logging in as the organization administrator. And what you'll notice when we log in is that we're greeted by a set of widgets on the home page that have been set by the organization beforehand. These can be whatever the organization wants them to be. Um, and in this case, they've chosen to have an RSS feeds and a Twitter feed as well. So we're going to go to our dashboard now and configure our ScalaT storage. So we select ScalaT from the list of 50 providers. And the system will now take us through a wizard, which will ask us a number of different questions to set up the ScalaT storage. So we're going to enter the name, we're going to enter the endpoint, the access key and secret key, and then we'll click continue. Next, it will then ask us which bucket we would like to use. In this case, we've already got one bucket that has some files on it. So we've now successfully added the ScalaT connector and the system is just going to go away and scan the storage for the files that are on it. And now that's completed, what we'll do is we'll go over to the file manager and have a look at the files. So as you can see, we have our corporate files from our ScalaT storage there. And if we navigate into this folder, you'll see we have both the finance and human resources folders already on this storage. So what I want to do is I want to bring in the marketing folder that we have. And it's just a simple case of dragging and dropping those folders onto the cloud. Now those files will go to the cloud in a number of parallel processes, so it shouldn't take too long to upload. And once those are uploaded, what we want to do is we want to share those folders with our colleagues. So the way that we do this is through shared team folders. So we're going to convert each of these folders into a shared team folder. And we're going to change the permissions on this folder to allow the team, so for example in this case finance, we're going to give them access for read and write access to that folder. And we're going to do the same for both the human resources team and the marketing team. Now these users actually came through our LDAP system, um, which we connected to the appliance and then chose to automatically import and synchronize the roles that we have with our LDAP system. So as more staff join those departments, they'll begin to have access to those folders automatically. So we're going to show you how this looks for the users within the organization. So let's first review which users we do have within the company. So we're going to go over to organization and then users. And you'll see we have three team members inside this organization. One is Mary, one is Frank, and one is Harry. And because we integrated the appliance with our LLAP system, the roles for these users has been automatically imported. So you can see one is belonging to marketing, one is belonging to finance, and the other one is belonging to HR. In this case, we're going to look at Mary from marketing, and we're going to show you how the experience looks for her. So we'll log out as the organization admin, and we'll now log in as Mary from the marketing department. And you'll see again that she's then greeted by the custom homepage message that the organization has set up before with the, the Twitter and the RSS feeds. And we'll now just go over to the file manager to have a look at to have a look at how she sees the files that have been shared with her. So you'll see she now has access just to the marketing folder and none of the other folders that are in the organization's storage. So she has access to the logos and the press releases. And from here, she can preview the files. She can look at information about the files, such as when the file was created, and any governance information about the file. And she can also make comments about the file. 
So far what we have seen is accessed just through the web file manager. However, most users like to use the would like to access their files on their desktops. So in such cases we have our native drives that work on Mac, Windows and Linux. And here we're going to show it working on Mac. Um, and we're logged in as Mary here, so she can see the same marketing folders and has access to all the same files and folders that she would through the web. The drive here works like any other folder on your file system, so you can open these files up in any of your native editors such as Microsoft Word um, and make changes in there as, an, as you wish and you don't need to worry about where these files get saved back, you just simply save the file and that will then be re-uploaded to the cloud, in this case Scalarity. So once this document is saved, you'll see on the right hand side the little pro pro progress indicator comes up, telling us how far the upload is going. And it's nearly complete. And that's now uploaded to our Scalarity storage. So if we go back to the web file manager and refresh the view, you'll see down there that our version 10 appliance document now has another version. And if that version was made by accident, it's easy to restore from there. Likewise, other files also open in native desktop editors, such as Preview inside Mac for this PDF. Something we hear quite regularly in the enterprise world is, well, how do users share these files with both people inside the company and outside the company? It's not uncommon to hear users say that they have actually uploaded files that contain sensitive information to the company to their Dropbox account or sent them using their personal email. Now, this is something that we really want to stay clear of when enforcing you know, the company's IT policy. So there's ways of enforcing secure file sharing through Storage Made Easy, and we're going to have a look at those now. One of these is through sharing links to files, which can all be audited and tracked by the IT administrators. For users to do this inside SME, they just select the file and they go to the share menu and select share by URL. And they can choose the link type. They can also set how long the link should live for, how many downloads the link can have, and also any passwords required to access the file. Once that's generated, they can then copy the link and then send that to a friend and in this example there was a limit and there was also a password set on the file so the user has to enter the password and once they've successfully entered the password the file will then be downloaded to their computer. All of these actions are then audited and tracked through the system audit logs. To help enforce the secure file sharing. The integration with sharing links is also uh, extended out to the uh, desktop and mobile tools. So here in Mac Finder, um, the user is able to right click on a file and then choose to share a link, which they then have the same controls that they have through the web. So they can set the expiry for the link, for example, they can set download limits and also set a password on the file. And again, that link then gets copied to their clipboard, which they can then share you know, to their friends over email or instant messenger. And this is in the Android app. So we have an account here and we can log in as Mary. And she can navigate to her files on the cloud, navigate to the specific file inside her marketing folder, so if she wants to share another press release. She can view the comments of the files from here. She can also download the files and open them up in an editor on her device. And she can also share these links as well. So she can enter the password here, also set expiries, whether she wants to email the link directly, and then that link will then be copied to her clipboard. So we have really deep and rich integration with a range of devices and platforms. 
that really help to enforce secure file sharing. This also extends out to Outlook and Mac Mail, allowing users to share files that they have stored on their cloud So what we've seen so far is how you can connect your storage, your Scality storage, with Storage Made Easy, and how end users will typically access these files, as well as the different tools that they can access these files over as well. So what we're going to look at now is what kind of policies and controls the organization can set on users' access, what they can do, and how they operate with their files. So we're now going to log back in as the organization administrator. And we're going to go to the options menu in the top. And we're going to have a look at the range of different options that exist here. So on the first page, we have some options for user governance. This is where the organization can control the features that are available to users. For example, whether users are visible to each other, whether users can download files from the web, or whether, for example, file commenting is allowed. Below that, we have some file sharing policies, which dictate how users can share files. So it can, for example, enforce that users set passwords when they share links to files. We can also change the security of our files and the file access, so we can enforce that users have two-factor authentication or strong passwords. Next, we have the encryption, allowing you to set the encryption key so all the files that get stored on your cloud will be encrypted. Next, we have support for versioning and trash, allowing you to set how many versions of a file we keep. Following this, we also have data classifications, which allow your users and yourself to classify the files that are stored on your Scality storage, so you can enrich your searches of files. We also have a great annotation tool built into the product, so this can, be, can also be configured. Number of user interface options can also be changed. For example, which pages users see, uh, the default folders users have access to, for example. You can also configure the notifications and which notifications get sent out. And finally, the appliance itself is fully brandable, so you can change the logos that display on the page and change the color themes if you wish. So here we're just going to update the logo um, for Acme Corp. Great, now that's done. Anytime any users now log in, they'll see these logos. The final thing to look at from a management point of view is the audit logs. Throughout this demo, we have been logging in with different users granting them different permissions and performing various actions with them. The audit log captures all of the events that have occurred on the system and makes them available for administrators. From here admins can search the history as well as export the logs to CSV. These logs are also exportable through syslog, meaning that organisations can automatically export the, export the logs from the system. So that concludes our, our look at the Storage Made Easy Enterprise Appliance. Aside from the enterprise appliance, we also have a number of standalone applications that organizations and users can adopt. Switching over to my Windows machine here, I'm able to show you the first of our standalone apps, the Scality Drive. Scality Drive is similar in comparison to the Storage Made Easy Drive we saw earlier, in that it offers native file system integration with the Scality Storage, so users are able to see their storage attached as a network drive, which they're able to access and operate on files with, as we're showing here. These changes are then reflected in the backend Scality storage. As I previously mentioned, the Scality drive communicates directly with the storage, so you don't get the benefit of complete auditing and tracking like you do with the Storage Made Easy drive, 
but it's a great tool to help with end user adoption. The other standalone app I would quickly like to mention is the Scality Explorer. The Scality Explorer differs from the Drive in that it offers a live view of your Scality storage. It doesn't do deep integration compared to the Scality Drive, however it's very handy if you need infrequent access to the storage, are handling large volumes of data, or are looking for a tool to manage the objects you have in your Scality storage. Thank you.